RBS Business Research Academy welcome to you in the two stage approach uh, series and this is the lecture number third of, of this series. So two stage approach basically uh, 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 means, uh, involve the two major approaches PLS same and the ANN partially is square uh, in the smart PLS and the ANN artificial neural network in the smart uh, in the A spaces. So there is a combination of these two one of the two stage. So in this stage, we are going to understand the output, how to understand the output of the AN that we are going to understand. But before understanding the output, my name is Dr. Rainbow Sumro and I'm working as a professor at Shabdi University, Pakistan. So if you want to contact with me, these links are available. So in this regard, you're looking here, several uh, research papers are there. So all these research papers, they are involving to see the two stage approach. So as already I told you, it's a wonderful and uh, now it is very uh, popular uh, like the technique is there, two-stage approach and uh, most of the research researchers they are adopting the two-stage approach. In the first stage, they are applying the historic equation modeling on their data and then they are applying the AN approach through which basically they want to know the, the, uh, the, the level of the predictions from their importance. The basic job of the AN is there. With the, how to know that the, which predictor, which independent variable is important among the uh, all the important, uh, all the independent variable. This is the basic job of the AAN. If you want to know about the more about this one, the, this is wonderful paper is there because while developing this, uh, these PPTs, I have used this uh, wonderful paper. Okay, two stage approach basically, uh, uh, same and the AN. Basically, these are complementing each other. These are not competing with each other. These are competing. That means the uh, AN is basically is competing the same. Okay. So before uh, first we are applying the same on the our data on our, this, uh, on our data and the result we are uh, getting towards the carrying forward to the AN and then AN is going to compete. It is not a competing. It's a competing tool. And the sample same plus is PLS is suitable for the linear relationship and but it cannot work on the non-linear relationship. So there's a problem of the same. So that's why now the while AN can detect the non-linear relationship and it is unsuitable for the hypothesis, hypothesis testing. So that's why I told you that these are competing each other. One technique is can uh, uh, work on the linear relationship and other one can work on the non-linear relationship. One more thing that the uh, AN is uh, unsuitable for the hypothesis testing. In the AN, you cannot test the hypothesis, but in case of the PLS, same, you can test the hypothesis. So there's a difference between the same PLS and the AN. One more thing is that because it involves a black box. Already I told you that there are three types of the layers are there, input layer, output layer, and the third is a hidden layer. So now black box basically is involving into the hidden layer. So what software is performing into the hidden layer, we do not know. So that's why we have term, we use the term the black box. What in what is inside the black box, we do not know. So that's why what is being done by the software, we do not know. In the first stage, we have to use the same uh, uh, for the overall research model and determine the significant hypothesis predictors. So first, we have to apply the strict equation modeling on our data to find out those uh, the significant hypothesis predictors. That means those paths which are significant only. We will carry forward those significant for for the application of the AN on those ones. Those paths which are those hypotheses which are not significant, we will not carry out all those ones. In the second stage, significant path hypothesis predictors are used as input to the neural network model and determine relative importance of the each predictor. And then the AANN approach will tell you that the uh, which predictors are which independent variable is significant from the importance point of view, but only those which are significant hypothesis. Uh, one question may arise in your mind that the, why we are using the PLS same, why not CBC? PLS same basically partial least square structural equation modeling in CB same. That is about the covariance based structural equation modeling. So the uh, problem is that one that the PLS same is basically uh, uh, it, it, can, it, it can work on the normal or non-normal data. 
and then the CVSAME only works on the normal data because CVSAME is a basically a parametric, it, it accepts the parametric data and uh, the PDSAME accepts the both parametric and the non parametric data. That's why we are preferring the uh, strict equation modeling, PDS strict equation modeling, not the CVSAME. Okay, now we are going to understand the uh, uh, a in in a species output. So the first result which you will get there is about the case processing summary. In this one, in is basically about the sample size and the percentage. So we have categorized the sample into the two training and the testing. We have allocated the 10% to the uh, training 550 or 560, and the rest of the five uh, 5040 we are providing. 90% we are providing to the testing. So now we combine these two, it becomes the 50,000, 5,600, and this is 100%. We have not excluded anything because there is no only problem with the data, all are the valid. And then total sample size is the 5,600. This is a model summary, summarize the whole model. In the training, sum of R squared, there is the one point, uh, 184, and the relative error is a 0.66. That means it's very near to the 0.1. And then uh, it is a testing. There's a again the test sum of the square is a 1493, uh, uh, and then the relative error is again point. The small uh, relative small error is there. And then uh, we have to provide we have to create a one table. The species will not provide you this type of table, but you have to create the table by yourself uh, in the Excel. By the way, I have left uh, one link uh, through which you can download. Uh, there is a template of creating this table because in that one I provided all the uh, formulas through which you can uh, create this type of the uh, table in the Excel. Just you are required to provide the data over there. For example, sum of the square of the training. Now this is the sum of the square of the training. How to get this one? This is sum of the square of the training. This one is sum of the square. And then you can take the sum of the square of the uh, 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 like the training, sum of testing. Now here you are getting the testing sum of the square. Now, but the problem is this one that the, in order to get the sum of the square error, we have to use the one uh, formula. Uh, uh, the for this part square root S E N the sum of the square error divided by the n. So you have to keep the end of the table. The of the for example uh, here, this is one eight four divided by. Uh, 550 because here uh, for the training and for the uh, testing now 1493 you have to divide by the uh, this number uh, 5040 and then you will get the uh, these numbers this is the RMSC uh, for the training this is the RMSC for the uh, testing Okay, and then we are deducting the RMC training from the RMC uh, testing, then we have got this value. Okay, again, I am repeating, it's very easy that the, in order to get sum of square of the error. So now this is sum of our square error, and then you have to divide with the sum of square uh, error of the training, because you are getting the value of the training divided it the, by the uh, sample size of the training, and then you have to get the sum of square of the testing and divided by Divide it by the uh, 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 testing, okay, 5040, and then you will get this number and the, this number. How to get this number? A square root, take the square root of the SEN divided by N. So first you have to divide uh, this SE and by the, this training, this value, and then take its square root, and then you can write down here. In this way, you have to create the table. So at least you have to create the 10 layers. So now layers can be created up to the 15, 20, 25, but mostly in the literature, the people, they said that they are focusing only on the 10 layers. So that's why the, you have to create the 10 layers. For each layer, the sample size may be different. So now, for example, here the sample size of 560 and the, uh, 5040, it may be different, but that, uh, it, 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 it will not be significantly different from each other. Uh, but somehow you will find a little different uh, in their uh, sample size. And then uh, average RMSC, you can take the value of the training and sample procedures should be relatively around this, they uh, uh, the small. So now you, uh, you see here the, the values of our, these are, are they are not much. They are somehow small values are there. 
SSE sum of the square error and RMC root mean square error and n is a sample size. And this is another uh, network. There's a 10, uh, there is the layers are there and then the, these are the values of for the training and these are the values for the testing. So now these values are the RMFC uh, uh, for the neural network. So all these are RMFC uh, values are there. Okay, this is the mean the, and this is the standard deviation. And now uh, by applying this one, how we can understand? We can understand that the, uh, there are different, uh, for example, the self-directed learning. So now, uh, okay, for example, these are your core independent variable. So all are significant, okay. Now we have to find out which one is uh, important from, uh, which is more, most important. So now it's important is a three, one, four, it means it is higher than, um, uh, the, than the rest of the independent variable. That's why it is 100% important. The next one is your online communication self efficacy is uh, important. And then learn control is important and the motivation for learn is important. So now, in this is the basically uh, the, what we can say, the uh, crux of this uh, technique of the N. Why we apply the N in? Because we want to know the, uh, the importance of the independent variable. So among the all the independent variable in your model, the most important variable is our self-directed learning. The next one is the online communication self -case. And this is basically, this is the job of the applying the SIMA, uh, A in an approach on your data. So now here, so these are the hidden layers are there. Okay, the same thing is, it's a black box. Now, what is what is being done here? We do not because all things, things are being done behind the curtain. So now, behind the black <laughs> contain, so that's why we cannot understand. This is the output layer. So these are your independent variable and this uh, this your uh, dependent variable. Okay, so again, the, these three uh, soft tools are available if you want to know more about the uh, ANN approach. So thank you very much for watching the lecture number three on the ANN. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have enjoyed this one, please subscribe my channel and like my videos and leave comment on my videos. Thank you very much.